بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين I begin in the name of Allah the beneficent the merciful and I ask Allah to send his salutations upon the prophet in his holy household Shame 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 is what I feel at the moment and I'll tell you why. Not long ago we had a meeting at university. The youth, Shia youth, gathered together and we had a meeting about Azadari. What is Azadari? If you ask me, it's the expression of emotion, expression of love for your Imam. Now in that meeting, they brought up, or they questioned, the reason to cry. They said, you mourn, we all mourn for Imam Hussein, we know what happened, but don't you think we should spread the message in another way? Don't you think it's outdated that we are crying for something that happened 1400 years ago? Let me repeat that. They questioned why we cry for Imam Hussein for the Imam that if it wasn't for him we wouldn't have Islam today that me and you would not be praying that our sisters would not be wearing hijab that we would not know how to praise Allah or what Allah even is whether he exists or not and all the other questions you can bring up. They questioned, why do we cry? This is an outdated thing. Crying, why are we crying? Shouldn't we show them another way? Yes, show them another way. Don't stop your crying. Go and hand out leaflets, go and talk to them. Don't stop your crying. In that meeting I said two things. I said, Imam Sajjad alayhi salam, Imam Sajjad, the son of Imam Hussein, the Imam which witnessed his father, his brothers, nephews, uncles, aunties, everything, everything, his whole family being oppressed, being murdered, being killed by Yazid and his forces. This Imam cried and cried and cried and cried and cried. Some say up to 40 years he cried. After the events of Karbala, when he would see water, he would cry. When he would see food, he would cry. When he would see children, he would cry. People questioned him, why are you crying? Oh Imam, it's been 40 years, why are you still crying? And we're not talking about a tear here, a tear there. We're talking about a drenched beard. We're talking about crying till his eyes will turn red. They questioned him, why are you still crying? And you know what he said? You weren't there to witness what I witnessed. You did not see what I saw. And the second thing I said was something that our current Imam has said. May Allah hasten his reappearance. Imam Mahdi السلام, has said that for the tragedy of Karbala and for what my great grandfather went through and my family, my auntie, and my uncles, and so on and so forth, for all of them, I will cry and cry and cry. I will cry so much until I have no tears left and if I have no tears left, I will cry blood. I will cry blood for the tragedy of Hussein. And me and you, this is the Imam, and me and you question, should we cry? Is crying outdated? It's outdated, let's give it up. Because the non-Muslims say it's outdated, we should give it up. Well, look, my friend, the non-Muslims also say that your prayer looks funny to me. 
It looks like an old-fashioned yoga. Give it up. Substitute it for the new yoga and other positions that you do. Fasting, outdated. Can you not afford food that you fast? What is this? That you spend so much that when it comes to Ramadan you have no money and you're forced to fast? Why are you fasting? Give it up. And all the other comments and all the other fun that they poke us. But you know what the sad thing is? It's not the non-Muslims. It's not the Jews and it's not the Christians and it's not the atheists and the agnostics and the whatever and whatever. It's not the Hindus. You know what it is? It's the Shia. It's the Shia. And I know this because I have Hindu friends. I know this because I meet people and I talk about things. I know this because I'm part of the Christian society at my university. And I've spoken about forms of Azadari, about beating the chest, about crying over something that happened 1,400 years ago, about hitting your back with chains and blades till it bleeds, about hitting your head with a sword till it bleeds. And you know what they do? Yes, they're taken back. Yes, they are shocked and surprised, but they have nothing but respect for me. They say nothing but, wow, that's courageous. Wow, that's a lot of love. I have people question Karbala, come to me and ask me what happened at Karbala, because I turn to them and I say, we had a ceremony and people were striking their backs with blades. They then become interested, anyone with half a brain cell becomes interested and says, what is this? What is so important that you have to strike your head with a sword? What is so important that you cause yourself to bleed? And that's when you tell them, this is what happened to my Imam Hussein. This is what happened to the man who stood against oppression. This is what happened to the man that taught Gandhi his ways. Mahatma Gandhi, the famous man that created a nation, that showed people that you can be oppressed and yet be victorious, you know what he says? He says, I learned from Hussein how to be oppressed yet be victorious. He learned from Hussein. My friends, go to Sweden, go to Switzerland, go to Denmark, go all over the world, travel and see. These same non-Muslims that you say are poking fun at us, that they question our acts, these same non-Muslims hold a banner for Hussein. These same, Muslim, same non-Muslims mourn Abbas salam. These same Hindus who believe in how many gods and their faith conflicts with ours, yet these same Hindus are the ones who show more respect to Hussein, our Imam, than us. This is why I said shame. Brothers, Islam remains like a castle. You've all seen that. A castle has a moat around it. People could not attack this castle unless the bridge was lowered from people within the castle. The bridge would have to be lowered before people could cross. In other words, that castle could not be attacked, could not be infiltrated. Islam is a castle and the only people that can open Islam to criticism that can open Islam to infiltration, that can open Islam to its death, is me and you, not the Jew. Don't blame the Jew. Don't blame the Christian. Don't point the finger at other people for mine and your wrongdoings. I have nothing against Jews and Christians. I have a lot of friends that are Jews and Christians. And believe me, they respect Islam a great deal.